Welcome to our Geologic Natural Hazards Lecture on Earthquakes. I'd like to start out, as with all of these lectures on natural hazards, talking about what are the hazards and why do we worry about this hazard. So with earthquakes, a primary concern we have is that they lead to a loss of life or injury when structures fall, such as buildings, bridges, or even trees. And so in this picture here, we see the collapse of a roadbed on the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge during the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake and indeed people were traveling across this bridge at the time of the earthquake and it it killed a number of people and smashed many cars. Uh, earthquakes can also trigger landslides which can bury people, animals, homes and more and this is particularly hazardous in mountainous regions and areas where you have a lot of unstable earth. Uh, tsunamis are a large killer of people during earthquakes and um, this is of course is a big wave that travels up out of the ocean um, after an earthquake and we will talk about more that more in another lecture. So according to the United States Geological Survey, earthquakes do pose a significant risk to about 75 million Americans spread over 39 different states. Earthquakes are caused um, where you have a fault where two tectonic plates are moving past one another. As these plates move past one another, there is friction between the two plates, the rocks along those plates, and so they don't move freely, and this causes pressure to build up along the two plates. Eventually, movement will occur after enough um, energy builds up along that fault line, and when that happens, that causes an earthquake. Volcanic eruptions are also a second cause of earthquakes. So in this picture we see the San Andreas Fault and you can see that the fault on the eastern side is moving south whereas the fault on the western side is moving north so they're moving opposite directions. There are three different types of faults primarily. There's the strike slip fault in which two tectonic plates are moving pass one another horizontally and then there's also the normal and thrust faults and in both of these cases one plate is being pushed up compared to another plate or being pulled down so one plate is moving up compared to the other and if you'd like to see animations of these processes I am including a, a link to a website that you can look at to see these um, in action. So I did want to provide a little bit of earthquake trivia. First of all, which state do you think is the most earthquake prone? Well, if you said Alaska, you are right. Alaska is the most earthquake prone state. And um, this would make sense since it also has some of the largest populations of volcanoes. Um, Another question that's related, where was the largest earthquake ever recorded in the United States? And remember that earthquake magnitudes have only been measured and recorded in the relatively recent past. Okay, so if you said Earth, uh, Alaska again, then you'd be right. The Great Alaskan Earthquake of 1964 was the largest quake recorded in the United States. It measured 9.2 on the Richter scale. Uh, some of you may have heard of the San Francisco earthquake of 1906 that killed about 3,000 people. This quake only measured 7.8 on the Richter scale for comparison, but there were a lot more people living in this area where the earthquake took place, and that's what made the difference. Here you can see a picture of the J.C. Penney store in Anchorage, Alaska, right after the 1964 earthquake in Alaska. And so it was a multi-story structure, and you can see how the walls on one side just fell off, and um, the one side of the store is just open to the air now. I also like this picture. It's an aerial photo of damage to the downtown Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska area. This is L Street, and you can see a um, crack in the ground where the where the ground was shaking so violently that it literally um, put a big crack down the center of downtown and um, shifted houses. Created using Powtoon.